All right, well, welcome to uh, episode nine of the Car Car Podcast. It's good to see you again. We've been missing each other a little bit with the uh, with the episode while I was away. Yeah, and I think in the next couple, I might almost be away. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, but... yeah, we'll become pen pals in the yeah. meantime, and we I'll might be, share the letters. I'll be picking up some random car parts from for uh, for you from where I'm traveling. I'm sure. I would be ultra keen to see that. Yeah, that would be amazing. I've already got a. I plan to take a second suitcase just in case, and I'm nice. very lightly packed. So, yep, yep, beautiful. Um, yeah, but if you didn't check out the last episode, we had a special guest come in and talk about all the um, all the engineering defects in vehicles. It gave me a chance to beautiful uh, trauma dump on everyone, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that was with the uh, big Mike. So he was actually mm-hmm. he's actually an engineer. So. Came out awesome. Hopefully, fairly well. You haven't had a bad experience with a vehicle before, have you? Oh, would I? No. <laughs> just last week, I was doing uh, control arms on a Nissan Tita, and it turns out you've got to lift the gearbox up to get one bolt out. Oh, just one hand like that, right? Yeah, something like pretty that. Pretty small car. Yeah. Uh, but we'll talk more about control arms, I think, later this episode. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's, let's get into in. it. All right. So we'll start with news. And uh, we, we both sort of tracked this one. This was the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So that's happened recently. Yeah. And uh, what was the standout there? Well, two things really. The uh, 100th annual running of the Le Mans. So oh, was 100 years. Yeah, century. That's why they've yeah, done right. so much fancy stuff. Um, and the big one for me was the running of a, a NASCAR V8 or a modified NASCAR yep. at yep. Le Mans. So... Uh, Garage 56 was the name of the team. Right, right. They ran okay. with Jensen Button and one of the big NASCAR names like Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Jimmy Johnson, yeah. Yeah, which is a classic NASCAR name. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it great? Like, so just some of the, the automotive racing names in the States. And, and like, yeah. you know, you got Scott Speed, who's Aussie, and then Jimmy Johnson. And, you know, I think if you were going to become like a race car yeah. driver in the states you change your name just to take you advantage. need to have a redneck name yeah <laughs> redneck you've got to be dale well, or jimmy or yeah that's it <laughs> yeah um but yeah big v8 uh in a big body car yeah yeah um, and i'm sure we've seen the have you seen the photos of it oh i've watched a little video of it yeah. um yeah where they're talking to jensen button about yeah. it and all that sort of stuff well, yeah. if not we'll show a size comparison yeah, 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 yeah. Um, check it out. Yeah. Now the weird thing is the V8 in the NASCAR. Um, we should give it a more European name, NASCARLO. NASCARLO. <laughs> well, I heard them talk about calling it a La Monster. Yeah, that's a pretty good one too. It would have like sounded it. like it too. It would have yeah. been an absolute well, beast. Louder so. than everything else there. Yeah. But the V8 in the NASCAR, mm. uh, same V8 that was in the Cadillac hypercar. Um, oh, this year. okay. Or yeah, similar cool. architecture. Yep, based off that. Yeah, um, yep. But the NASCAR is way more loud, apparently. And so it should be. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and and other... wasn't it more powerful than the normal NASCAR spec? Like, didn't they? Didn't they? Not... I think they released one or two hundred horsepower out of out of the engine. Yeah, I'm not sure, but they. I think they were saying, you know, somewhere between six fifty, eight fifty. Which Plenty. is a stupid number yeah, yeah, yeah. for a naturally aspirated yeah. V8. And then um, on top of that, it was quicker than the GT cars. I think, yeah, so uh, overall it finished, uh, sorry, overall, in the GT class it finished about 10th. Yeah. But its lap, lap to lap pace was, was um, yeah, like competitive. It, it could have won. Yeah. Um, so I think because it wasn't um, to the normal specs of Le Mans they couldn't enter the GT class so it was a bit of an experimental yeah, sort of so uh, entry GT would be anything road going so mm. legally I guess they're not so definitely not that the NASCAR but that's what they were going for yeah like to compete with and um, yeah if, if, if it wasn't for I think that gearbox failure brake failure which they came in sorted out yeah um, so if it wasn't for those they would have been right at the pointy end yeah which and even 10th in class, first incredible. go is pretty good. Yeah, because yeah. it's so so much bigger than the other cars on there. And mm, mm. it's kind of a big American <laughs> screw you to the Europeans. Like, it's the only way to do having, it. Having a Camaro mm. um, out there ripping into Porsches and Ferraris mm, and mm. such is and kind I, of a laugh. I thought they were uh, discontinuing the Camaro, so... Yeah, well... 
Probably for Australia. Ah, okay. I don't know that's what they're doing for in, in the States. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that, that's good. They'll good probably, the next generation will probably be an EV crossover. <laughs> like the Mackie. Well, it won't sound the same with the uh, the V8. They'll have to yeah. get some good speakers on the outside or something like that. PA system. Speaking of speakers, uh, this is going to maybe tie into some of our EV recalls later on. Um, hmm. Have you seen the new uh, Hyundai uh, hybrids and electric vehicles running around? Ah, uh, Hyundai. Um, yeah, I think I have seen them, they um, make the but not most... much. They make the most ridiculous noise. Um, so are to... they mandated to make a noise? Like for ped- no, pedestrian safety be. or something? Um, because Teslas don't. And yep. neither do Camrys. Mm-hmm. Um, none of the Toyota hybrids do. Okay. But Hyundai's play this... Um, basically, it's like a Star Wars hum every time <laughs> they, they take off. It's like... Uh, it's like some sort of door opening noise right, out, of the, okay. out of a spaceship. That would be weird. Yeah. yeah, maybe they should do the Darth Vader. You know, do 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 do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they should make it one of those reversing beepers. <laughs> well, yeah, something like that. A squawker yeah. or something like that yeah. would be even so more it, annoying. A noise the occupants as well. Yeah, yeah. What did they do? The V eight. Yeah. I remember. I remember. I'm not sure if it's much of a thing these days. I don't. I don't see it out there. But you used to be able to buy a little duvalaki and it would make the speakers on the interior of your car sound like a V8, an F1, what, whatever's out there. And uh, so it just matches, it must pick up the revs of, of your engine and matches the noise yeah, to yeah. it. Well, you remember those? I've never seen them, but I can imagine what you're talking about. The, mm. the difference being is there's no market since nowadays. Mm. It's all pre-programmed into the car. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I think um, uh, there'd be a few cars out there, but like yeah. the Toyota 86, they've got a the airbox plumbed sort of through the cabin and then well, back, back to the, the engine. So BMWs and what's the other brand? They actually run the speakers as imitating. Oh, they use the speakers to do it. Yeah, okay, well, there you go, factory factory added. Yeah, um, and I think maybe it was in Tesla's. Yep. Again, yep. you could pick what what sound you want. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, for yeah. your interior noise, not yeah, for your yeah. exterior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, if you wanted to sound like the spaceship, yeah, that's that's yeah. one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Very good. Well, um, talking one one thing you were telling me about, and I, I kind I saw it, but I didn't really look into it. Um, Pikes Peak. Yeah, and look, I'm really bad at following racing events. Mm. I Forget they're on until I see the highlight reel. Yep. Um, but Pikes Peak, uh, there's two events that I always want to sit down and sort of watch. It's the highlights from Pikes Peak, mm-hmm. and it's everything that happens at Goodwood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, Goodwood's awesome. But Leah Block drove Pikes Peak this year. So that's Ken Block's daughter yep, from yep. episode one or three, something like that. I think like that. she even did some of her own... Um... She, well, had, she had a build going on out at Quattro at some stage, didn't she? Well, yeah. I think we even spoke about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we talked about Ken Block early on in the podcast and mm, how mm. he passed away. And Leah Block was sort of doing a tribute run to her dad. Yeah, that's in cool. The, in the car that he was meant to run last year that broke down. And how'd she go? Well, I don't know the results because all the videos are more... Just about the cinematic car. Cinematic. Yeah, the fact yep. that she's doing it. Okay. Um... But she's meant to be quite a quick driver anyway. Mm, she's mm. been in quite a few race series now. I think she does like uh, Nitro Rallycross sort of stuff. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. Well, it's in the blood. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nitrogen runs in the va- through the veins. Um, I saw the car and it was, it was a Porsche and it looked hot as. So we'll throw a picture up there. Yeah. That was cool as. Horrible name. What they call it? The Huna Pegasus. <laughs> Um, but yeah, based the um, paint scheme based on the Pink Pig, the Porsche 917. Ah, yeah, right. Okay. Um, yep, yep. And I think what they did was take a 911 ish chassis or mm-hmm. body, uh, made it sort of mid engined, massively turbocharged, um, all sorts of stuff on it. It was really mm. quite a cool build. Um, and while the exterior was, it was one of those things that Ken Block and Hoonigan did really well. Um, while the exterior was inspired by the Pink Pig, mm-hmm. they actually had a um, really quite famous artist 
do all the artwork for it. Oh, uh, okay. So yep, the yep. related. Yeah. It but looks looks cool. Yeah. Incredible kind of car. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and and Pike's Peak now it used to be mostly or, or a good portion of it was um, dirt. Up but until, now it's all sealed, isn't it? Yeah, up until no, the late eighties or something, it was entirely, I think, entirely dirt, entirely and then dirt, it was yeah. half paved. Yep, yep. The problem being that where it snows at the top of Pikes Peak, yep, the every time it snows or it ices up, it lifts the road and damages it. Uh. So for for donkeys' years, they decided that it wasn't worth it, um, mm-hmm. and now they repave it like, I don't know, say it's once every five years. Yep. The year after it's repaved, every record gets broken. Ah, uh, with then the snow got, and yeah, and then you. Oh no, with the with the racing. Yeah. Ah, okay, fresh tarmac. Yeah, yep, yep. So nice they, and grippy. they break all the records, and then the year after that. Right. So if you if you're if you're trying to, okay, tip tip for the um for the viewers who want to break Pike's Peak records, and I know I've given it a few goes on Gran Turismo and the Escudo, but um, you just time it for when the road gang. Laid down. Yep. If it's getting laid down, enter your Escudo. Yeah. Um, if it's not getting laid down, just kick back for another year. The weirdest thing that I didn't realise mm. about Pike Peak Racing as well, while you might think that it's all like they close down the road and do the whole weekend of event. Yep, yep. They actually run the practice sessions um, only in the mornings and then by mid morning you've got to pack up and it becomes regular road use again. Ah, okay. So I think they run all the practice sessions yep, yep. from like four AM to ten AM and then they wow. have to go back to a tourist road. Right. Okay. Because I'm guessing there's there's people that want to yeah. get to I don't know wherever they're going and they might have a cabin up in the hills or whatever it is. I think there's only a hotel at the top. Uh, so it's <laughs> yeah. probably just for the hotel. Just for the hotel. <laughs> the just run a bus up and down, and yeah, wow. Well, okay, well that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, we'll have to um maybe fact check it and put it in the description. Mm, mm. Yeah, very cool. Okay, well maybe maybe we can find a, a picture of uh like a like a bus for the hotel going yeah. up, or like maybe a, a commercial vehicle taking you know I don't know whatever food I would or not whatever. I want to go on a bus <laughs> up that road. I wouldn't yeah. want to put my life in anyone else's hands. Some pretty tight turns, eh? Yeah, mm. and big drop-offs. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> the highlight reels of Pikes Peak crashes make you oh, thankful yeah. for roll, roll yeah, cages. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's scary. Yeah. On to the next thing. Yeah, well, um, I've got some news out of the UK. Yeah. And me at my age, it's been a little while since I've done a driving test. Yeah. But driving tests these days, they seem like they're getting harder and harder. And, and the, the, the word is, is that the wait to get them done is getting longer and longer. So if you fail the first time, there's a bit of a gap between the next opportunity that you get to get your license. Yeah, that would be correct. Correct. And I'm, I'm guessing it's more expensive than what, what it was when I did it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and and I've got a story from when when I when I went to get my license and I, I did the test. So actually, I, I went in uh, a driving uh, what do you call it a learn, learner driver trainer yeah. in his vehicle, and he took me up and we went we went up to um to the desk to get the test, and the assessor was there, and he was chummy as with the uh, with the assessor. Oh, hey, John, or whatever your name is. Yeah. How's your week? Yeah, how's your week been? All that sort of stuff. I'll see you for fishing on the weekend. Yeah, and I got my license first go, so uh, I'm not sure if it was a skill thing or uh, you know a networking thing on on my uh, instructor's well, behalf. It's funny you say that, and um, because I actually failed my first driving test. Oh, did test. you? Yeah. Um, and it was one of those things where I like pulled up to an intersection, and I don't think I saw a car coming, but the car was mm-hmm. turning anyway. But yep. It, he had to put his foot on the brakes because he was worried about it. And as uh, soon as he touches the, the, it's all over. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. But I got the exact same guy the next time round. Yep. And won't name names here. He was running quite behind that day, and he said, "I only did yours not long ago, right?" Uh huh. Yeah. It's like yep. And he's like, "I only failed you for that thing." Yep. Oh, I don't really need to test you. Let's go and do like two manoeuvres and then you can drive me back and I'll catch up on wow, time. Wow, nice so and easy, yeah. The first time I failed, the second time I got it in like 12 minutes. And, and you know, like, <laughs> that's crazy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Different times. Um, 
Yeah, the funny thing is, like that, him doing that, it would just take all the pressure off and you'd probably drive better anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the people oh. that fail repetitively tend to get it in their heads that it's... It's a big thing. Yeah. And the pressure's on. Yeah, um, oh, I forgot what I did, but I did something wrong and I, I thought I probably should have failed as well. Yeah. Um, but here we are. I've been released onto the roads. But you know what they're doing in the UK is um, they're actually... There's, there's services out there where you can get someone to do the test for you. So they'll get a lookalike or a doppelganger or whatever they call them. That's horrible. And they will sit your test for you. That is absolutely shocking. And so there's that one. And then there's another one when you're doing like the written test. Yep. Where they will pop a Bluetooth earpiece in and they will feed you the answers. Wow. That's that's got there. me speechless. And, and it, mate, I reckon this is happening in Australia as well because I've seen some some of these kids and how they drive. Yeah, actually, not I've just kids. That, actually, um, quite recently, the the consistency of driving on the road is getting so much worse mm. as well. Mm. I'm sure yep. you've seen it. Uh, maybe Brisbane's starting to get like Sydney. Yeah, that's it. That's um, it. But I think this brings me back to my what we were saying before the podcast. I think that we should get rid of speed cameras entirely. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think, um, amen. I think that we should uh, instruct drivers to learn how to drive better. Mm -hmm. I think dri uh, getting your license should be a longer, more stringent process, like mm -hmm. a three-day yep. practical course or practical test. And I think that we should retest every, I don't know, three or five years. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can charge for that. Yeah, I... I, th I I think upskilling the drivers, great idea, needs to be done. Um, but I think I think it needs to be affordable as well. Yeah, because you know I mean, driving is almost like an independent sort of thing. So, so many people it's got to be done in a smart way. So many people go through life without ever getting a speeding ticket, unlike mm. some of us. <laughs> but instead of getting three hundred dollars every three years off of me and not charging everyone else mm, mm. you get a hundred dollars off of every member of the population yep. every three years yeah yeah it'd probably work out just about equal yeah yeah, yeah. no that's fair yeah gee and i i would i would save a bucket load exactly <laughs> you and i both <laughs> oh dear yeah actually that's that's a good cost saving and there you go they're, yeah. they're funded at the same time it's affordable Happy days. roads are safer we reduce the death toll that's right yep and, less accidents and it would actually be a good um, courtesy check and because there's road rules out there now that didn't exist uh, mm -hmm. when we took our and test stay up to date and even road rules that we thought were true have mm. changed slightly yep so yep. merge rules are always changing yep so what, what is a merge rule well, for me it's it's a zipper thing you know one 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 and then you sort of go for it the merge rule last time I checked was anytime you've got the dotted line you have to give away Ah, really? Um, and every time the lane ends, it's mm -hmm. the vehicle in front. So, uh -huh. dotted line. Yep. Uh, give away. No dotted line. Uh, whoever's in front. But I think the zipper thing should be law. Mm. 100%. And I think the other thing that should be enforced, because they could still make, make their revenue off of tickets. Yep. They and they do. They just have to go and do the... Uh, Keep left and less overtaking. Oh, that is the my worst. biggest pet hate. Oh, my. Especially if yeah. you... Like, every speedo is out mm -hmm. 5 or 10 kilometers. Yep, yep. If you're going 100 mm. and there's a queue of traffic behind you, yep. just move over. Yeah, I, I've got a really bad one that I, I encounter regularly, or almost daily basis, um, where there's, there's an exit lane and it backs up and the traffic's quite bad on there. So people from the highway will try and zip around it. So they'll go on the right-hand lane to zip around and do a late merge in. Oh, so they're yeah. cutting the line, basically. But because they're cutting the line, they're on the highway doing 60 k's an hour. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going past that exit, so I'm stuck behind them in the right-hand lane. Yeah. And it, uh, I think, I'll leave it there. I think there's two things that should be laws mm. or should be recommendations. Yep, yep. Um, I think, because I've seen this in Germany... Mm. If there is a traffic crew, uh, traffic jam, all the traffic should try to go to the emergency lanes mm -hmm. um, to create clear path for emergency traffic. Yep, yep. makes sense. Uh, and I think the other rule should be, if you're on a 
exit that's backed up, mm-hmm. you should pull into the emergency emergency line to queue. If you're on a oh yeah okay well yeah. that makes sense yeah yeah because, pick up a few nails. Well, <laughs> might do <laughs> because there's a over where I live, people will occasionally pull into and queue in the emergency yeah, line, yeah, and it means like courtesy that we to me, doesn't don't it? get yeah. traffic. Yeah, yeah, it's that's just, it. Simple to me. Really, they should just remark the lines or something like make it wider in that section. Make it dotted. Dotted, yeah. yeah. Exit only. Make it dotted. Do do like a Kramer. You remember when he when he made the I don't know if it's full five lane highway into like a three lane highway, so it was nice and wide. I've got no idea what you're on. Oh, about. okay. All right. This is Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be a little bit young for Seinfeld, but back in my day, we used to watch a show called called Seinfeld, and there was an yeah. episode where Kramer. Isn't that the guy from the B movie? Are that <laughs> yeah, good on you. Um, yeah, all right. So, <laughs> showing my age, but um, Kramer, one of the characters on Seinfeld, yeah. to the young people, um, they had a thing where you could sponsor a part of the road, a part yeah. of the highway. So he he did this thing. He sponsored part of the highway, took pride in it. He'd go clean it up and all this sort of stuff. And he thought, wouldn't it be nice if instead of five tight lanes where it's all real tight? Yeah. And, why don't we have three nice and spacious lanes and we can drive nice and relax through it? So he, he remarked the, the highway through that oh, section. <laughs> somewhere between brilliant and horrible. Yeah. Yeah. But back to the back to someone doing your driving test. Yeah. Say, okay, you, you missed it ten times in a row, you just can't get it, but you want to get your license, what would you pay? Oh. If I if I had money, mm. I might pay a thousand dollars for it. Okay, all right. So what what they're paying? The people are paying for this service that's advertised on TikTok and Facebook and what yep. and socials. Um, anywhere from over one thousand three hundred Australian dollars to eight thousand dollars. Yeah. This is what they're paying to get their license to, to cheat and get their license. That's absolutely horrendous. I. The people that are providing this service, that should be a jailable offence. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, definitely. And the people that are taking this up should be barred from getting the licence. Yeah. For for at least five years. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Like, if you're going to that length to try and cheat the system to put other people's lives at risk, Mm. you shouldn't be allowed to drive. That's it. That's it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my new story. But um, we were talking about... Porsche um, Carrera GT in the recall sense. So Porsche Carrera GT, what, about 15 years old? Yeah, somewhere between 03 and 06. Yep, yep. Yeah. This is another safety aspect. Mm. So just like failing your driving test is a safety aspect. Um, It looks like Porsche has done a recall for all Australian delivered Carrera GTs. Uh, if uh, If you're not up with the lingo, that was the V10... Hyper car. Very special car, very, yeah. I see nice. um, Doug, Doug DeMuro's got one. Yeah. Um, like, just the little attention to detail on the Carrera GT. Yep. Like the bamboo shift knob. Yep, yep. Callbacks to the, to the 917s and such. Bamboo shift knob, it's pretty much a sustainable, what do you call it? A eco-friendly. Eco-friendly car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a recall out. Apparently, the lower control arm mounting points okay, yep, on yep. the front, so that's front suspension, mm-hmm. um, has a tendency or had some poor materials used and had a tendency to corrode or crack uh, with yeah. age. So when you're driving 200 miles an hour, yeah, you don't want that to crack on you. Apparently. Um, I almost wonder if people would go back and look at uh, Paul Walker's crash now. Yeah, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, good yeah. point. Because um, he was yeah. in a career GT. That was a career at GT too, wasn't it? Yeah, and about 15 years old. Yeah, but wow. a massive, massive recall um, because one of the most expensive cars you could buy on the road today. Mm, mm. But weirdly, it affects 11 vehicles. I think it's 11 in Australia, but I think they're more well, overseas. Yeah. So I think they made 1,300 all up. But about four, five hundred were under the recall. Is yeah, that you, would, you would think that they wouldn't have to do a recall. They'd just call in the owners because mm. Porsche must have a very good relationship with the owners. Yeah, it's a bit of a PR sort of thing, isn't it? But yeah. I suppose if I wonder, I wonder what the 
requirements are for the recall, maybe they do have to. Yeah, I think if it's a legal it. thing, mm. if it's the government mandates the recall, then mm. they have to mm. list it. But you're right; they would have a relationship with a you know, someone driving a Porsche Carrera GT. I'm sure Porsche would know who every one of those owners are. They they know exactly how many they sold. Mm. They know exactly who owns them. Yep. They yep. know the exact service record. It's like. It's a little bit silly. I, it's almost a little bit strange to put a recall out on 11 cars mm. in Australia. And 15 years? Yeah. Wow. Well, that posed a, a question to us before, which was, mm. what's the most delayed onset for a recall? Mm. Mm. Um, so, did you find anything? I, I did a quick search, and um, I, I think it's uh, American um, legislation or American rules um, that fi- you have to do it within 15 years. So what happens after the 15 years, I'm not sure. So that might be something we, we follow up on and find a little bit more about what what the surroundings are around doing a recall. Yeah, check back in in mm. two episodes. Yeah, I reckon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, there's another recall that we wanted to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tesla's had a recall in China, but it makes absolutely no sense to me. So it's... Similar thing to the Porsche, it doesn't make sense to me, but it mm. doesn't make sense for a completely different reason. So it looks like uh, the Chinese government has politely requested Tesla uh, install or reinstate um, regenerative braking options. Mm. Now, I thought they had that. Well, they did for quite some time, mm. um, but it looks like an over the air update in the last year or two has removed it mm-hmm. and only given the op- the drivers the option of normal for okay. regenerative braking. Yep, yep. Which, to me, is fine. If you've got a Tesla, you've made the choice to have a Tesla. You want the regenerative mm. braking mm. anyway, for the most part. Yep. But the Chinese government has stepped in uh, and has said they can't do that. Uh, you need to reinstate dual mode and you also need to add a warning message to the dashboard for people who depress the accelerator deeply for an extended period of time. <laughs> um, you imagine me driving that car. It'd just be like warnings all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Overspeed warnings are the most annoying things in a car. Yeah, uh, yeah. Especially if you've got the overspeed warning that comes right on 100. Yep. And yep. everyone who's driven knows that it's very hard to stay down. Yeah, and 100, 100 on the cars, usually uh, a little bit more in real, like a little bit less in real life. Yeah, so you, exactly. You, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, the old Japanese cars mm. used, uh, for the JDM market used to have a chime that would I've, sound I've constantly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think in um, some cars in Gran Turismo 7, they actually have it. So yeah. you, you play the game and it's just constantly chiming. That would be so frustrating. <laughs> but this almost looks like a political move rather than a reasonable, like an actual recall, because it affects one point, what did I say? 1.1 1. 1. 1 mil- over a million. Yeah, 1.108 yep. million cars, and the total number of cars that Tesla has ever sold in China is 1.109. So those extra cars that weren't affected, they're, well, they're some, some uh, Tesla Roadsters from, from yeah. way back or something like yeah, that. When yeah, they, when they only had like... An analog signal to, to say <laughs> if they could go or not. What was it um, like a scale electrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the with the coil spring on it, yeah, yeah, always yeah. used to spark. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, no, that's um, it does seem like the government can do whatever they want, and um, maybe uh, maybe Elon said something you shouldn't have said or something like that, and they just uh, clamping yeah. down. Yeah, it it doesn't make sense to me, but who knows. I mean, but this is only in China, so no only other markets have done this. I wonder if the Teslas in other markets have the option to um, change your regen braking settings. You or wouldn't not. think that Tesla would do something like that, just update <clears throat> one country to remove their options. Must be uh, global, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if no other country's called it a safety issue yet, mm. and what kind of safety issue is it anyway? <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's... A recall that makes no sense. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Brake pedal delete, hey? <laughs> well, the regenerative braking on some of those will throw you out your seat anyway. Yeah, I think they can bring, bring you to a stop, can't they? Yeah, they will. And um... So any Tesla owners watching the show, 
just pop it in the comments and just let us know what what is the regen braking situation on your car yeah and let us know also <clears throat> if you can change the sound effect that your car makes oh yeah we're talking yeah. about that so electric cars pretty quiet you gotta let pe pedestrians know you're sneaking up on them so i want to know if they have a noise on the outside and we want to know can you mess around with the noise on the inside can you yeah. make it sound like that nascar's v8 let's um let's come back at episode 11 and see if we've got any yeah, results yeah yet. that's right yeah. yeah yeah very cool now on to safety all right um i've got a good one here um and it actually links back to our porsche carrera gt cool. uh recall um control arm suspension in general mm -hmm. it's massively underappreciated what it does for your car um if you're a you know, hot boy racer mm. uh, and you've got a civic and you've dropped it onto max speeding rods coilovers uh i'll keep my opinions to myself on that yep yep and alternatively if you're a mum of 12 and you're running around in your diesel captiva mm -hmm. um with shot lower control arms um it's amazing the amount of difference that that poor suspension will make to safety and to drivability of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've seen one just this week, which I will will put a photo up here. Mm. It was a um, 1960s Falcon that was complaining of a very severe pull when braking. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And she thought it was pretty normal. It's just an old car. Exactly. This is what they, this is what they used to do. Yeah, um, yeah. She, the front bush on the caster rod, which is essentially the lower control arm, mm -hmm. had completely perished and disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, so every time she was braking, the left-hand wheel was pulling back yep. like 20 yep. mil. So you and just got heaps of movement yeah, going on. self-steering. Um, so she had to... Mm -hmm. The first time I drove it, she forgot to warn me about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I almost shot off into a parked car. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, if you're going to do your own servicing, that sort mm -hmm. of stuff, Check your brakes, but check your suspension as well. As soon as you're starting yep. to look at the... Um, so, uh, have a look at the mounting, the bushes. Yeah, so you've got... Most cars use a rubberized bush. Yep. Check for any perishing, mm -hmm. any splitting, anything like that. Um, check for movement. Yep. Forward and back. Use a little lever bar if you need to. Mm -hmm. Make sure that things aren't split. Yep. Because um, that's genuinely one of the most important safety things for sure and then on top of that mm. a lot of these bushes are enclosed but any bush that's um standalone say your uh, link pins or your strut mounts yep anything like that um as soon as they're showing signs of wear start yep. looking at getting those replaced because yeah, right. if they drop out they are actually going to drop out yeah, that, yeah, that wouldn't be fun to I've, be in the car while that happens. I've seen a first generation of new MG Yep. Uh, recently where the front link pins had dropped out. Um, in a new one? Not like brand new. Yeah, yeah like newer, the, newer, newer style. Like the early 2010s. Okay, yep. Yeah, yep. Um, the front link pin had dropped out and it would like lock the steering at an angle. Yeah, scary. Yeah, very scary. Yeah, definitely. So is it a matter of time that you should replace them or is it purely an inspection-based sort of decision? It's definitely an inspection-based decision because mm -hmm. I've seen cars that are driven frequently but are quite old, mm -hmm. um, so not long distances, and the, the bushes might be fine. Yep. Conversely, I've seen cars with... Uh, with 40,000 Ks on with split bushes. Yep. It's yep. just down to the driver, the situation. Conditions, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think if you, you're buying like a, a second-hand car, it's one of the things early on that you should be doing. You should be checking all of that because it's, it's an unknown Yeah. From you know, when, when you first get it. And um, you'll find that when you make those changes, the car is going to feel a million bucks. It's yeah, going to feel I've awesome. Just, I've just done all the... Um, all the bushes in my ute, uh, and at the same time, I've done all the bushes in that Falcon. Yep. 
Yep. And it is astounding how much better both of those mm. cars drive mm. now. Yep, yep, um, I bet. So that's something to look out for. Mm. Um, if you are going for any kind of suspension repair, <laughs> make sure it's a decent quality part. Mm -hmm. uh, if yep. you're doing standard road driving, stick to rubberized bushes where you can, where they're accessible. Mm -hmm. Some older cars, they don't make them anymore. Yep. Uh, and when you're going for uh, shock absorbers, always pick a good brand as well. Mm. So not bottom of the barrel, max speeding rod stuff. Yep, yep. Um, but probably going to bring us into our... Product. Yeah. Yeah, well... You wanted to show me this one. Yeah, so this is uh, this is a Dobinson's Remote Reservoir Shock. And uh, these things are, are popular within the four-wheel drive community. You've got the separate uh, reservoir over here. And... Um, this is a great way to um, bring it away from the rest of the suspension components and have that heat management uh, managed a bit better. Yeah, um, I was looking at this before and this is a, I mean, I used to work in a shop that did four wheel drive stuff. Yep. This is an awesome looking product. Mm, I mean, mm. um, they've really gone the extra, the extra They've done distance. a great job with the product. Like, yeah. Just simple stuff as well. The the um, logos and such on here are all not just st stick stuck it on. on. Yeah, they yep. are a sticker, but they're not just stuck on. Sort of uh, lack it over. Yeah, all the um, all the bushes uh, adjustments are knurled and like anodized. Mm -hmm. All this pipe looks really nice. Um, circlips, lock nuts, mm. all the stuff you want. The to fit see. and finishes is nice. Yeah, and what's yeah. a? I mean, a kit like this is going to be a few thousand dollars. Yeah, it's been a while since I've looked at the pricing, but you know, the people that are, are serious about about this sort of stuff, yeah. they'll 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 do it. A good shock absorber mm. is almost more important than a good spring. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Having a properly tuned spring is not going to do quite as much as having a properly tuned shock absorber. Yeah. Well, if your shocky goes and you you're bouncing around and yeah, it's, it makes for a fun drive. Yeah, but you. <laughs> But it controls it. It controls everything yeah. that's going on. Well, yeah, it controls a lot of and what goes on. And you sell these for just about every. The, uh, th this will be more of a full drive yeah. thing. So a lot, a lot of your um, Prados, Land Cruisers, yeah, etc. Your a lot of your four Bs will They'll have an option kit. here. Dobinson's does a kit for most Absolutely, of those. Absolutely, yeah, they do kits. Yeah, it's great so you can do kit. this with a lift kit or something like that as well. So yeah, lots of options there. Yeah, I um. I think that's awesome. One thing I did notice that this did, this kit came with was this extra little bracket. Yep. Now, this was pretty special for mm. me because um, it means that they actually thought about it. This is $5 worth of part, yeah. essentially. Um, but it's a designed mounting bracket mm -hmm. for the reservoir on the chassis of the vehicle. Yep. Yep. It means you're not bodging stuff up. Mm -hmm. It yep. means you don't have to DIY anything. That's right. You do it neatly. And it looks proper. Yep, that's right. Yep. Yeah, yep. And that, that's that's the challenge with, with these sort of setups is you've, you've got to find a home for this. And um, yeah, that, that just makes it makes it a neat setup. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's... Well, I think this is a really nice product. Mm. Um, one thing I would wonder, especially if you're going to mount this to a vehicle because this is a rear shock absorber um i would want to double check that the dust boot can be secured at each, each end yep yep because one of the biggest damaging factors for shock absorbers is going to be Dirt particle, getting in there. Uh, ingress yeah because mm, mm. they've got a uh, oil and gas seal just inside the top yep. cap i yep. think so so long as that's done properly I see no reason to not like this product. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's a great one. Yeah. Very good. Well, tips and tricks. Yeah, well, this is not quite so related to our uh, to the rest of our topics today, mm. but it's something that I think is uh, kind of a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to do your own servicing at home, make sure you go out and get yourself some cardboard first. So mm. I think mm. you've got a photo... Yeah, yeah, we'll throw the photo up here. So this is an example of um, Lachlan's setup, and he's working on working on the um, Auto One Mondeo. Yep. And um, yeah, it's just something so simple, something you you probably have in your your recycling yeah. and ready to go. Well, the problem is if you're a home gamer, mm. you are 
more than likely to spill some oil on yourself? How many times have you done a service and dropped some oil? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty clumsy, yeah. yeah. And, and grease, oh, jeez, I get it everywhere. Yeah. yeah, actually, and even worse, I'm I'm a mechanic by trade. I always manage to get drops of oil on myself mm-hmm. or somewhere around yep. me. Yep. It doesn't matter how well you prepare, mm. um, it's the inevitable. So, uh, lay out a couple of boxes on the ground. Mm-hmm. It just allows that like little bit of barrier to protect the concrete. Yeah, uh, soaks up any oil. Uh, and the really good thing that no one ever seems to think about is it also keeps your back off mm. of the cold concrete. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so well. if you suffer from back problems, mm. um, laying down and doing a service on the ground can be pretty horrible. Yeah, yeah. It and just makes it that little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner for you as well. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you spill the oil. Uh, you just bundle it all up, throw yep. it in the bin. Yep, yep, yep. Or yeah. the registered landfill. That's that's correct. Yeah. yeah, that's what we meant. Not in the yeah. recycling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'd better just about wrap it up there. I think. Cool, cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you for tuning in and. Uh, these don't just go out on the one platform. This is going out on multiple platforms. So um, if you want to listen to it in the car, um, you can. You can. We've got it on um, Spotify and a few others. Yes, we uh, we might be a couple of episodes behind, but we'll yep. be yep. putting them they're, up as soon as they're possible. They're popping up as they come along. Um, check out Matt and the team at Auto One at Auto One Browns Planes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, check out us at Cashy at Cashy Australia. Yep. Um, and definitely and you're on all the socials yeah well and we, we try to be as well except twitter and i think I tw- yeah. <laughs> both of us have bo- uh, both of us have got to do more tiktoks yes yeah, yeah. that's uh i've got a couple of yeah. ideas at all i'll give to you all after right this. cool cool bring it on um and make sure to like subscribe comment to car car auto on youtube spotify awesome. all of it all right guys say uh, stay safe